Hi guys, today we're taking a look at a gimbal. So this particular one is from a company called Xeon and it's the Smooth X two axis gimbal. Details are in the description below, including purchasing links. There's also a discount code, so check that out. So what's the purpose of a gimbal? If you're taking video footage on your mobile phone, it will stabilize that footage. So there's less of a wobble on there and it's smooth as you're gliding along. So this particular gimbal is only providing stabilization on two axis. So what that means, it stabilizes the roll and the pan action, but not the tilt. It weighs in at 246 grams, has a four hour runtime and three hour charge time. And the cool feature on this it has an extendable arm up to 26 centimeters and can be used as a selfie stick. So let's open it up and see what you get in the packaging. You get a case, has a rubbery feel to it. They're branding on the front there and there's a strap here opening this up. Get the standard sort of documentation, multi-language. You get a charging cable, USB-A connection on one end and Type-C on the other. Cable length is 44 centimeters and build quality of the cable seems all right. You get a tripod, they're branding on each of the legs and with the three legs out, you've got a rubber feet on each of them and a fixing point. Build of this feels good and the whole point of having this, you could just put the gimbal on this and you could take a time lapse with it or even place the gimbal and film yourself for instance. And then we have the gimbal, nice and compact. You can see for yourself, literally just fits in the palm of my hand. There's a bit of paper on there just describing how to unfold this. So if I take this off, just pictures on how to open it up. So to open up the gimbal, give it a twist, and then you'd pull down slightly, and then lift up, and then twist round. And there you go, simple as that to open up. And then you've also got the arm to extend out, so that's the selfie arm. And there you go, you've got an adjustment point, and you can bring it back down again. Build quality is all strong plastic on here. You've got the arm which will hold your phone in and that can just be manually expanded out. Looking close on the grip here, just highlights you need to register on the app to activate the product. You've got rubber over here, a grip onto your phone. Coming onto the back, there's a rubber finish here as well. You've got the zoom control here, up and down for zooming. You've got a joystick and two buttons to stop and start recording and switch between the different modes on here. Looking on the side here, you've got a charge port. Flipping it around on this side, you've got the power button. If I press hold of that, there you go, it's turned on and it gives you an indicator of battery level and flashing blue, meaning it's ready to pair up via Bluetooth. Underneath, you've got the point where you'd install the tripod and just to show that, there you go, and opening the legs up. You can see for yourself, nice and stable. Build-wise, feels nice and comfortable, very compact in size and to place your phone in as simple as just taking it, lifting it out and then just locking it into position like this. I've got the gimbal set up here, and one thing to mention is once you've got it out of the box and you turn it on, it doesn't work automatically. You have to activate it via the app. So you need to install the ZY Cami app, sign up and register with them, and then you can connect to the gimbal and activate it. I think it's a bit ridiculous. Don't see why you have to do that. They say it's for after sales maintenance, but really you shouldn't have to register an account just to get a product working. Now, once you've got it working, I can now demonstrate the two axis side of things. So with this, obviously you've got the roll motion as you're coming along and then you've got the pan turning it, but you don't have the tilt, which is this motion here. So you can see it doesn't sort of straighten up. Whereas a three axis gimbal, you'd see the camera twisting and going like that. So in terms of functionality, interesting how it does work and to flip between the different modes, you just press the button here twice and there you go, flips over to portrait mode. Click it again and back to landscape. So you've got a zoom option here. You've got the joystick and the joystick can rotate there you go and if i want to pan it there you go left and right on that you've got the record button it's a quick way of just starting a record you're taking a picture and the selfie mode is quite cool because i can just literally pull it out and there you go that's what it looks like with the arm extended out camera on there so in terms of functionality if you're a vlogger and you're using a camera with a selfie stick, this is probably the ideal device to have because it gives you that additional stability with this. 
with a standard gimbal, you wouldn't have the extension arm. Now I've got the app up and running on my Android phone and you can see this is the interface you're presented with to record video and take pictures on. Now coming over to the left hand side you've got a setting for resolution. Now it all depends obviously on what resolution your device goes up to so mine can go up to 4k hence why I'm seeing that. Next option we've got is the glamour effects so this is like a filter which can adjust the video slightly and the picture quality and if I go on to 1080p, it's only available in 1080p. You can see the options available in there. Auto, slim, smooth, brighten, enlarge, light and rosy. Back from here and then clicking down here, you've got the settings option. So there's three different setting options. One's for video and you can see the options available. What's interesting in here, you've got gesture control here. So you can wave and initiate a photo to be taken or even a video to start recording. Looking down below, you've got an option to remove watermarks, so any sort of footage you take with the app will have a watermark on there, so do remember to take that off. You don't really want to see that sort of thing on your footage. Now coming to the top, you've got the gimbal options on here. So scene mode, you can see there's a walk and run option. Obviously that will help stabilize the situation you're in. Looking in follow mode, the top mode is PF mode, which stands for pan and following mode. Then below that, what's selected at the moment is L mode, which is locking mode, and that just locks onto a subject. And then you've got roll and pan following mode. Coming back, you can see joystick speed. You can adjust that zoom speed, and you can invert some of the controls on here. Coming on to general, you can see the options available here, just details about the device. Coming back, you can see the pictures or video you've taken just down below. Now clicking the option here, you've got gesture control and that will turn it on. So if you're waving at the camera, it'll initiate a photograph. And then you've got the record button, camera flip mode, so you can flip between front camera and back camera. Clicking the icon at the top, you initiate smart. And what that does, it allows you to record a series of clips and in various situations and it overlays music on there. So you can make a short video clip. Pretty cool, it sort of guides you through doing the clips and then it just stitches it together and applies some music on there. Now coming above there, alive, so this is a streaming option. Photo, so you can just take a straight picture with this. Video, so that will initiate recording a video. Then you've got pano, it's a panoramic picture with this. You've got time lapse, and that allows you to kick off a time lapse video, and they recommend using a tripod for that. And then you've got hyperlapse. That's quite a cool feature, so as you're walking along, gives sort of a speeded up view of your walk and things. So a good amount of features here, so let's test them out. Next, let me demonstrate the different modes on here. So at the moment, I've got the pan following mode, and what this does, the smartphone pans left and right following the movement of the stabilizer handle, while the roll axis motors are locked. So you can see that just smoothly pans around as you're turning it with the handle. Next we've got the locking mode and what this does, this actually locks both the axes and the orientation of the smartphones fix. So you can see as I move around, it just stays in the same position. The only axis obviously controllable is the tilt one. Next we've got the roll, pan and following mode. And with this, the roll axis and the pan axis both move, so just to show that's the pan and the roll is like so. Next thing to show is that you can lock onto an object. So if I now lock onto the object here, what happens is if I move away, it locks on and it just follows it. Quite a cool option to have. So if you are locked onto a subject, and there you go. Moving around, it will just stay focused. Next is the gesture control, so if I wave my hand There you go It's a little bit intermittent how it works Now this footage here, this is without a gimbal taken on my mobile So I've just done a pan shot, just going round, just show the scenery A little bit of shake in there as you can see, obviously I'm just holding it in my hands and now walking along with the phone see for yourself is a bit of a shake on there this is the samson s10 plus picture quality is good but you are seeing 
quite a bit of shake on there. Now this is the thing about not using a gimbal. You will see a lot of shake. You won't be able to hold it that steady. Now this is with the gimbal in action. You can see for yourself, much smoother pan on this as it's going around. And now as I turn and start walking, more of a smoother motion as you're walking along. Obviously it's missing that additional axis, the tilt axis, but smoother obviously than just holding the mobile, as you can see. It's so pretty cool, does help to a certain extent. Now moving on to hyperlapse, that's a bit of a time-lapse feature, but when you're walking along. It has a nice effect to it, as you can see. So if you went for a long walk, it gives a pretty cool effect to it. Next, we have the time-lapse option. Quite nice to see that in action. And if you had a lot of scenery, a lot of people in the distance, it gives a good effect as it's going along. One of the cool features about this is obviously the extendable arm on here, so the selfie stick. So it's not limited to just using it in selfie mode. If you do twist the gimbal, you can see here, you can get close low down shots. And that can be pretty cool and not really achievable with a standard gimbal, only because you'd have to kneel down and go at a really odd angle to do this. With this, you could actually have it pointing down and go at a faster rate. And it's quite a comfortable way of filming no difficulty and you've got the added bonus of the additional stability with this. So quite a useful option to have the extendable selfie side of things. Next moving on to the panoramic shot so you can see here I've got it in panoramic mode and it's doing a portrait shot just takes a picture at a time turning and it just returns back to the middle and you can see here the amount of footage that's being grabbed. Quite a large area is covered. Now doing the same thing in landscape mode. Quite good, you get a bigger coverage with landscape mode. And again, it just takes the snaps. And then if you give it a minute, there you go. Now it just returns back and that's what you can achieve with that. That's really cool. The coverage on that is massive. Now this is the smart mode where you can just create footage, it stitches it together, put some music in there, and you get some effects with it. So lots of effects available here. So in summary, you've seen this gimbal in action, really impressed with the functionality on here. The app works really well. It's only a two axis gimbal as I've shown. It is a shame. I think it would have been good if they had the third axis available for stabilization if you wanted that functionality. It would have given that extra push on the device itself. I like the fact it's got the extendable arm. So if you're a vlogger, gives you that wider shot if you wanted to show more of yourself in the background. If you're walking with other people, you can see much more on there. Good for the low shots as well. So you can pull out the arm and obviously pan along the ground if you wanted to and gives a really cool effect on there. Price wise, only 60 pounds in the UK and $60 in the US. So there you go, hope it's helped anyone thinking of purchasing this. Details are in the description below, including purchasing links. Hang around for the end cards. I'll have a playlist with more gimbals on there and cool tech. Drop me a like as it really does help the channel out. Thanks for viewing and see you in the next one.